This video is proudly sponsored by DraftKings. I know this is a football video and I'll be cast to hell for talking about anything else. But I have to acknowledge that the NBA playoffs are about to get underway. You may be asking why mention this? It's because DraftKings is an interesting opportunity available to you. We're nearing the play-in tournament. And DraftKings is offering new players a shot to get $150 in free bets instantly with just a $5 bet. No matter who you pick, you win. Things get even spicier with the Happy Hour Super Boost. Every day from 4 to 7 p.m. there are new odds boosts that make certain bets more enticing. If DraftKings Sportsbook isn't available in your state, you can still take part in DraftKings Daily Fantasy Contests, where millions of dollars in prizes are up for grabs throughout the playoffs. You know what to do from here. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use promo code UTREE. Put down $5 on any basketball team and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's code UTREE at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. But enough about basketball. On to the main presentation. I did this kind of video last year with the 2016 NFL Draft and liked doing it. So why not try this again with the first NFL Draft vid I did? It's like looking back on baby's first rambling. The 2017 NFL Draft will go in history as an interesting one, mostly because of a combination of tremendous fortune and costly mistakes made by several teams. It helped to shape the future of football as we know it. And since it's been a half decade since this draft, we can properly assess the damage. Let's take a look at the first round for ourselves. With the first pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Miles Garrett. All right. Defensive end, Texas A&M. I remember when it was rumored that the Browns were thinking about picking Mitch Trubisky here. That would have been a big mistake, wouldn't it? A lot better to go with a shit-wrecking defensive end, multi-time All-Pro, and danker of a defense. All I ask is, for the love of God, keep him away from Mason Rudolph. And especially keep him away from his helmet. Considering that's the only blemish on his record, I think this pick worked out. The Chicago Bears select Mitchell Trubisky, quarterback, well, North Carolina. Hello. Behold the pick that near single-handedly set a franchise back years and ended up getting Ryan Pace fired. The Bears panicked. They traded several mid-round picks to move up one position to reach on a quarterback that was seen as a project at best. It was terrible from the moment it was even announced. Nothing against Trubisky, but he should have never been picked this high. He jumped up the draft board from a late first to a potential number one for no reason whatsoever within a matter of weeks. Exemplifying how much teams tend to overthink things when they have too much time on their hands. Chicago was the worst place Mitch could have gone. He was rushed and ruined thanks to a primitive scheme and lack of support. No arguments in the world could have justified picking Trubisky here. The pick was Deshaun Watson. It was always Deshaun. Don't say Mahomes, he would have been ruined here with how shitty the Bears are. Even with Watson's misdeeds, he'd have lasted more than four years. It gets even worse as well. Do you know who was selected with those mid-round picks they traded? Alvin Kamara and Fred Warner. This trade won't only go down as a disaster, it'll be seen as one of the worst draft aid deals of all time. The San Francisco 49ers select Solomon Thomas. Wow. Defensive end, Stanford. I'd like to think that San Francisco was laughing so hard at the Bears that they forgot to develop their own player with this pick. Thomas got caught up in a logjam in the Niners defensive front and never came into his own. He's now a backup for the Raiders. He did have a big injury in 2020, but he didn't do all that much before that. At least you got Fred Warner out of the trade, San Fran? The Jacksonville Jaguars select Leonard Fournette. Running back, LSU. I only wonder how well he could have done if he weren't stuck in Jacksonville. He had that outstanding rookie year, and all they did after that was hurl him under 10,000 buses. Tom Coughlin hated Fournette. They depressed his value so badly that they couldn't trade him for anything. He had to be cut, and it may have been the best thing to happen to his career. Moving to the west side of the state has revived him. He's back to being a feature back, and he's won a ring, but once again, you wonder what he could have been. Leonard, you're having a strong career, but this grade isn't about you. It's about Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. The Tennessee Titans select Corey Davis, wide receiver, Western Michigan. Panic was in the air once this pick was announced. What a colossal reach by Tennessee. How dare they gamble everything on a wide receiver with questions surrounding his game. 
The good news is that Davis's talent is translated to the NFL game somewhat. The bad is that he was muscled out of headliner status by other wideouts, mainly AJ Brown. Corey's a solid wideout, but his numbers don't scream fifth overall pick. He did get a damn good payday from the Jets regardless. Even then, you still expect more out of this kind of pedigree. He'll have a long career, but you just don't feel satisfied if you're the Titans. Yeah. 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 It's okay. The New York Jets select Jamal Adams, defensive back, LSU. The best in the nation. I know it was in tribute to an old friend of his, but the memes are what fuel this godforsaken channel. As one of the best safeties of his class, there are certain opportunities that are allowed as a result. The main one having a team love you so much that they trade two first round picks to bolster their defense. And then realize that Jamal Adams wasn't the true answer the Seahawks were looking for and had to pay him incredibly since they had no leverage. Seattle had a reason to throw heaven and earth for him. He's a solid safety in most aspects. You could argue he's overrated, but the contract and haul the Jets got speak for themselves. Maybe his trade value was the best in the nation. The Los Angeles Chargers select Mike Williams, wide receiver, Clemson. If Mike Williams were on any other team besides the Chargers, he'd be a headliner. The problem is that he's often overshadowed by Keenan Allen. It's a good and a bad thing, mostly because he's their deep ball threat that creates another great wrinkle to any team's offense. After years of teasing, he finally had his breakout season in 2021, showcasing why he was such a top prospect out of college. There's a reason why the inferior LA team paid him well once he hit the open market. It's because they need him for their attack. You could say he hasn't reached his full potential, but he's come damn close to it. The Carolina Panthers have selected Kristen McCaffrey. Wide receiver, I mean, running back. Christian McCaffrey is an outstanding running back who forces defenses to change up their schemes to try and stop him. His first few years helped Carolina to resurge onto center stage and give life to a dying era. However, that was short-lived, mostly due to a horrifying curse that was inflicted on him. He's become a BMW. High profile and sexy, yet always broken down in the shop and requiring a huge repair bill. CMC keeps getting injured. It's a great question for Carolina. He's a damn good player, but is he worth the price of admission these days? I'd say yes, but the Panthers are a complete mess right now, so I just say free him by means of trade to a relevant franchise. The Cincinnati Bengals select John Ross, oh, wide receiver, Washington. This pick was vintage Bengals in the Marvin Lewis era. Ignore legitimate issues on the team and focus on the sexy pick that was a luxury. It didn't help whatsoever that John Ross failed to adapt to the NFL at all. The most notable things of his career were Lewis ripping him for a lack of production and being injured when practicing as a scout team cornerback. Dude has incredible speed, but it doesn't translate into any other ability. He'll show flashes, but that's it. You don't draft that with a top 10 pick. No wonder why since he was so shit for so long. The Kansas City Chiefs select Patrick Mahomes, the second. Quarterback. Oh. I have a hunch that this guy didn't turn into the next Alex Smith for the Chiefs. Mahomes went to his perfect match. A team that traded up to pick a quarterback in the first round for the first time since Todd Blackledge. He was very high risk when taken, but the rewards for Kansas City have been great. Their first franchise QB since Trent Green. Their first Super Bowl in 50 years. And electrifying, revolutionizing play that everyone else has tried to emulate. This was the best situation he could have gone to. There are more than a few places where he would have become a bust, but the Chiefs catered to his strengths. Look at that contract he got and say he wasn't worth it. No, he'll be here for a while to come. The AFC West probably won't like it. Barring his cap at knocking them out of relevance. The New Orleans select Marshawn Lattimore, defensive back, Ohio State. New Orleans had a generational draft when you look back on it. Even if a player or two didn't reach their peak with the Saints, every player they selected has become a quality NFLer. It's funny because I was under the belief that Mickey Loomis was a hack before this moment. Probable divine retribution there. Same goes for Marshawn Lattimore, who immediately became one of the best corners in football from the moment he was selected. A true shutdown option. And paid like it too. Nothing else that needs to be said. He's damn good at what he does. The Houston Texans select Deshaun Watson. Quarterback, Clemson. At the time of the draft, Houston had no choice. They had to move heaven and earth to pick a quarterback. They couldn't deal with another year of Brock Osweiler. Every other option had failed. So in comes Deshaun, and it was nothing but horrible misfortune from the moment Goodell went to the podium. 
He looks great as a rookie, eh? Torn ACL forcing next year's first and second to be premium selections for Cleveland. He's a game changer at QB, you have to suffer through Bill O'Brien's incompetence. When you finally get rid of the butt chin, piss off Deshaun so much that he'll never play another game for you. Before it's revealed that he's had countless infidelities in massage parlors across Houston. In a vacuum, this was a great pick, but the unintended consequences for the Texans have been honestly catastrophic. You got your quarterback, but at what cost? The draft pick hall is nice, but I'd rather have the franchise QB. The Arizona Cardinals select Hassan Reddick, linebacker Temple. It took Reddick a bit of time to emerge to relevance. Three years into his tenure, he showed next to nothing. He failed to get to the quarterback, he failed to make an impact on the field. It went badly enough that the Cardinals declined his fifth-year option. But it's as if something finally clicked for him. In his fourth season, Hassan became the dominant edge rusher that accrued double-digit sacks in 2020 and 2021. Arizona's mistake was Carolina's gain for a season. And he's converted that strong year into a nice deal with the Eagles. Sometimes it just takes a bit of time. And that happened with Reddick. The Philadelphia Eagles select Derek Barnett. Defensive end, Tennessee. Barnett's not what you'd call an elite defensive end, but he's a damn solid starter for what he is. He's an NFL caliber player. And while he's not a game changer by any means, he's formidable. To be fair, that's good enough for a defensive end in the Eagles system. I'll err on the side of optimism. The Indianapolis Colts select Malik Hooker. Defensive back, Ohio State. I feel like the football world would be more forgiving towards Malik Hooker if he could stay healthy for a reasonable semblance of time. The unforgiving gods have robbed him of his full potential thanks to a litany of long-term injuries. The result is being relegated to backup duty in Dallas and becoming another victim of football's bloodlust. Just another notch in the belt. The Baltimore Ravens select Marlon Humphrey. Defensive back oh, from Alabama. Baltimore needed an elite corner to take the mantle from the declining Jimmy Smith. Fortunately for the Ravens, they seem to hit well when it comes to replacing defensive stalwarts. Humphrey is a legitimate difference maker on the defense. And when he went down with injury last season, he was sorely missed in their secondary. I only hope he recovers well. Rest easy, Baltimore. You got yourselves a gem. The Washington Redskins select Jonathan Allen, defensive end. Alabama. The team formerly known as the Redskins have made fuck up after fuck up. And this continued when they fired Scott McLuhan for not fitting in with their allegedly damn good culture. While calling him a drunk anonymously to the Washington Post. They still had his scouting reports at the time of this selection though. You can tell with how Jonathan Allen converted to the NFL level. Solid Pro Bowl caliber and that's paid like it. I wish I could say the same about the past five years for Washington but that's their own damn fault. The Tennessee Titans select Adoree Jackson, defensive back, USC. Adoree has talent. There's a reason why the Giants ended up paying him after Tennessee declined his fifth-year option. However, the problem is one that plagues many talented players that can't forge a true legacy. He can't stay healthy. It's been his biggest flaw and it's prevented him from playing a full season since 2018. When he's on the field, he's a good option, but that's when he steps onto the field. Seems to be a trend with this class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select O.J. Howard. There you go. Tight end, Alabama. I only wonder what Howard could have accomplished if he were able to play regularly. Like many in this first round, O.J. <gasps> keeps getting injured. Not to mention he was always caught behind someone and failed to thrive. If it wasn't Cameron Braid ahead of him in Tampa Bay, it was Gronk. Now in Buffalo, he'll be behind Dawson Knox. Maybe being with the Bills finally allows him to thrive, but for now, it just seems to be frustrating for both team and player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. The Denver Broncos select Garrett Bowles, tackle Utah. If you were to talk to Broncos fans about Bowles a few seasons ago, you'd have thought he was going to be flung off a mountain. A whipping boy on an offensive line that left a lot to be desired. Fortunately for Denver, they managed to sculpt him like he was Pygmalion. Under the tutelage of Mike Munchak, Bowles has become a sturdy, dependable force for a line that needed all the help it could get. He's a long-term piece and he'll be paid like it as well. He's become everything the Broncos could have wanted and then some. Sometimes you just need the right circumstance to help things click. The Detroit Lions select Jared Davis, linebacker, Florida. The biggest punishment that occurred with Jared Davis was that he was drafted to Detroit. 
You have to suffer through an organization that felt their best move was poorly imitating the Patriots everyone loses. Davis was starting caliber in that system, but that's about it. His travels had him be denied his fifth year option, go to the Jets for a season, and then come back to Detroit. I guess he can say he's a multi-year starter on bad teams? Yeah. 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 The Miami Dolphins select Charles Harris. Defensive end, Missouri. All you need to know about Charles Harris was that he was traded after three seasons for a seventh round pick. He hasn't panned out whatsoever. Whatever skills he has have not translated onto the field and he's bouncing around from team to team. He did have his best season last year, but the downside was that it was for an awful Detroit squad. Considering his extension, he has some time left in this league, but he's far from expectations. The New York Giants select Evan Engram. Tight end, Ole Miss. Don't let the random Pro Bowl appearance fool you. Engram was a massive disappointment with the Giants. More often than not, there were many of us wondering if his hands were made of stone. Drops on drops on drops. He's starting caliber, but I wouldn't say he's successful by any means. If he were, he'd still be a giant. Jacksonville did pay him a bit this offseason, but that says more about Jacksonville than Engram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. The Oakland Raiders select... Garyon Conley, defensive back, Ohio State. He was a risky pick when he was taken thanks to the criminal allegations he was facing, but nobody will allege that he was any good at the professional level. His failure to thrive in Oakland forced him to be shipped off to a Texans team desperate for any sort of secondary help. Note that this was Bill O'Brien doing the trade and his tenure was awful. He spent 2020 injured and 2021 out of football. Not looking hopeful for a revival. Also known as the standard Oakland Raiders pick. The Cleveland Browns select Jabril Peppers. Oh! Wow. Defensive back, Michigan. He was seen as a pretty solid pick with pedigree at the time, but Jabril's a tricky player to grade. He's a jack of all trades, but hasn't been able to keep it a position for long. He was pushed into a role he wasn't ready for out of the gates, then got shipped to the Giants in the infamous OBJ trade. He's starting caliber and an effective special teamer, but he's either been dealing with injuries or unable to reach the upper echelon. Perhaps he finally breaks through in New England. However, for now, he's not a success, but he's not a flop either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Atlanta Falcons select Takaris McKinley, linebacker, UCLA. You know how Tech's career would have gone better? If he wore the frame picture of his grandmother when he played, it would have probably given him incredible superpowers to get to the quarterback with ease. McKinley has just not thrived since the draft. He couldn't see the field consistently in Atlanta, then publicly demanded a trade and then his release in 2020. It was obliged. And then his contract was voided by a few other teams due to failing his physicals. Any other chances he's had have been undone by injury. I told you he should have worn his grandmother's portrait when he played. The Buffalo Bills select Tredavious White. Aww. Defensive back, LSU. The Bills were in serious turmoil in the 2017 draft. The Rex Ryan era was an outright disaster and Doug Whaley was merely a puppet for the incoming Sean McDermott. Sean was the one calling the shots here, and he made a direct hit with his first pick. White is seen as one of the elite corners of the game, paid handsomely by Bills Mafia and feared for his shutdown abilities. I only hope he recovers from his ACL tear fully. Buffalo needs him. The Dallas Cowboys select Taco Charlton, defensive end, Michigan. To think that Drew Pearson talked all that shit to Philly a day later only to watch the Cowboys overlook several premium talents for alleged scheme fit. The only needs to go filled were having an awesome first name and being cut from the team in several years. It was a marriage from hell. Dallas hated Taco and the feelings were mutual. Ever since his release, he's bounced around as a backup for a few teams. The only relevance Taco has in the NFL are on Tuesdays. The Cleveland Browns select David Njoku. There you go. Tight end, Miami. I keep thinking Njoku is a lot more to offer than he has. It's a case where the talent is obvious to anyone who watches the Browns, but consistency is a massive issue. He has a lot of eerie similarities to OJ Howard and Evan Engram, if you think about it. You keep thinking, okay, this is the year David emerges as an elite tight end. But it never happens. Perhaps with Austin Hooper gone, he finally breaks out. How long can we keep waiting for it? <laughs> The Pittsburgh Steelers select T.J. Watt, linebacker, Wisconsin. Let's see, reigning defensive player of the year, tied the NFL single season sack record, a game changer on defense, and forced the Steelers to renege on their long tradition of never guaranteeing money past the first year. 
I don't know, you guys. This one's pretty hard to assess. The San Francisco 49ers select Ruben Froster, linebacker, Alabama. Foster was a combination of bad behavior, bad timing, and bad luck. Ruben didn't do much in San Fran, but it was cut short due to an arrest for domestic violence in his second year. His second domestic violence allegation in months. The charges were eventually dropped, but the damage was done. After that, he would sign with Washington, where he would immediately destroy his knee in practice. He hasn't been back in the NFL since. This guy was a boomer bust prospect coming out of college. Well, one of those outcomes came true. The New Orleans Saints select Ryan Ramchek. Tackle, Wisconsin. Ramchek's in the same situation as TJ Watt before him. Currently one of the best right tackles in the game, extended to a premium contract by the Saints, multi-time All-Pro? This one might have worked out. Might have. As you can see, the implications of this draft were seismic on the NFL world. It made teams into juggernauts and broke them into nothing at the same time. Kansas City changed their fortunes with one trade and one selection. We know who that one might be. They weren't the only winners. Once again, the New Orleans Saints had a generational draft in hindsight. Not only were Lattimore and Ramchek excellent pieces, but there was Marcus Williams in the second round, Alvin Kamara and Trey Hendrickson in the third. Even those that didn't make a big impact with New Orleans, like Alex Anzalone and Alquadin Mohammed, managed to become NFL starters. This draft near single-handedly swung their closing window wide open again. I wish you could say it led to great successes, but all it brought about was pain. They don't talk about that down there, for obvious reasons. As for the rest of the league in the second round, there were some big names taken. Dalvin Cook and Joe Mixon jump out immediately as running backs, even if Mixon fell due to off-field concerns that have fortunately been healed with maturity in time. Buda Baker is another major piece of this round on the defensive side of the ball. The rest of the round is flush with solid role players. Not to mention the likes of Dalvin Tomlinson, Zach Cunningham, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Deion Dawkins. The third round has star power aplenty. Including Camara, there's a little-known wideout selected who went by the name of Cooper Cup. He's not the only one. Kareem Hunt was taken here, so was Chris Godwin. Kenny Galladay was a pick in this round. Defense thrived too with Larry Ogunjobi, Shaquille Griffin, and John Johnson. In the fourth, Chicago fared well despite their disastrous first. They got Eddie Jackson and Tariq Cohen in this round. For others, Samson, Abokam, Jamal Williams, and Dietrich Wise were fruitful selections. The fifth has a game-changer all his own. George Kittle, one of the best tight ends in the game. Not to mention a certain breakout running back for the Packers. Aaron Jones was picked in this round as well. The fifth also gave us Jayon Brown, Anthony Walker, Matt Milano, and Devon Gaccio. For the sixth, there's nothing game-breaking, but there is starting caliber talent in Chuck Clark, Xavier Woods, DJ Jones, and Chase Roulier. The seventh round is slim pickings, but it did offer Chris Carson and Harrison Butker, who was picked by Carolina. Bet they regret that one nowadays. The Mr. Irrelevant in this class was Chad Kelly, most known for being chased out of a house with a vacuum after a Halloween party. Fun times. There were even solid players that slipped through the cracks. Think the likes of Austin Eckler, Robert Tanyan, Kenny Moore, Kendrick Bourne, Taysom Hill, and the legend of Young Way Koo. Nothing incredible, but good pieces to be found. And that was the 2017 NFL Draft. A fair reminder that these careers are not yet over. Legacies can be broken, forged, or rehabilitated in the years to come, and that will only be revealed in time. That's the fun in all of it.